Woohoo! Wait, what's going on, YouTube? It's Donnie B all day. It is freaking beautiful out. I'm talking blue skies, sunshine. It's not, I mean, zero humidity right now, so it feels it, it'll change. But right now, it is beautiful. Temperature is 70, like six. Man, it is really freaking nice. So, I thought somebody did something nice for me. I'm going to enjoy the nice weather. We're going to do something. We're going to make a nice video, right? Either that or it's going to suck and you guys are all going to point and laugh at me. It's happened before. So, we're going to talk a little off-grid right now. I loaned this. This is what the Tracker, Tracker X, I think it's called. I loaned this to the Shredder. Um, so, they can get a feel for my grip because this thing came with a grip that to me was just so uncomfortable it was unusable it was just i mean it was a good great knife great knife but it was so uncomfortable so i gave it a new grip i took away a whole bunch of material i the whole thing looked like this which i love i changed it you know gave it some contouring rounded off the edges i cut away a bunch of steel out of here cut away steel out of here now this knife is super freaking comfortable i sent that to them and they were like oh yeah it really feels good um so they sent it back to me not only did they send it back to me but they decided because i let them use it um that they were going to uh pay me back a little bit by sending me another one but with it and i'll get it i'll get to it the last time i i sent them back not the last time um one of the times i sent them a package i sent them young shredder a bunch of stickers well young shredder sent me some stickers back stickers so this is what i'm gonna do i put a lot of my these stickers that i get i put them on my computer the problem is my computer has like full stickers it can, obviously i can't put one there that's a touchpad so what i'm gonna do is because this is the shredder i am going to just tear off a couple of my ride or die stickers ones that have been there for a long time that's what I'm gonna do and if you all see my skateboard collection you know I like to skate you know I like to skate but a couple of these got to come off to make room make room for somebody else so here we go I am now taking a shredder sticker if I can peel it away and it's going to sit right in the face right right up front of my laptop and I'll show you I'll show you young shredder and then I'll have to put something else to fill the gaps so now every time I open my computer the shredder will be right there so shredder you now have a place in history you are dbad computerized all right so Shredder not only sent me some stickers, but he also sent me a letter. Touche. You know, every time I send a Shredder a package, I write a letter. So the Shredder decided he's going to write one himself. He wrote this, right? So this isn't like, you know, his dad wrote a letter on his behalf. Nope. Shredder wrote this. And I'm going to read it to you guys what it says. Dear Donnie B. All Day, we noticed that every time you speak, your breath is visual. It is so bad smelling, we can only guess because we can see it, that it's no wonder you have no friends. Whew, wow, this is kind of hard. I am only 10 years old, and I am more of a man than you will ever be. Man, Shredder, oh, you're getting me right, right here. I love this kid. Your feet look like small pontoon boats and you can probably float across the water but your greasy italian skin separates you from anything h2o so much love all right so now let's read the real one all right it says dear donna be all day we noticed you haven't used any off grids in a while we thought we could help with that here is one of their brand new chef's knives for your cooking videos. Mm, I guess I know what I'm doing today. 
and I have some stuff to cook. Hope it doesn't make your other kitchen knives look bad. The shredder. So, awesome. Let's see this kitchen knife. Ooh, shredder. So, obviously he knows I like to, I like to get dirty in the kitchen, man. I like to make it work. So this is the off-grid knives grizzly and it's the blackout i don't know if they have two different versions i'm assuming they do because there's two different versions right here this looks like a non-blackout this looks like a blackout of the same knife holy moses all right so take it out i like the look of the handle typical off-grid uh box it's a uh, a kydex sheath for a kitchen knife which is pretty cool as you'll notice it is not um, belt looped or anything like that. It does have attachment holes so you can attach this to your bag if you want, but this would be a slip-in for me most likely. I wouldn't tie it onto my bag. Um, if it's something I'm going to be using as a camp kitchen knife around food, I'd rather have it in the bag than out of the bag, obviously. So let's check it out. One thing I can tell you right away is that as a stock grip which I have found that I'm not too crazy about stock grips from off-grid off knives. This is probably maybe the most comfortable um, off-grid stock grip I've felt so far. Um, what is this, G10? Uh, let's look, let's look. So the blade is 6.125. It's a really nice looking chef's knife too. Um, the blade width is a beautiful 2.1875. I love me a wide blade, y'all know that. Blade thickness is 2.9 millimeters. It's a chef's knife, so it should be thin. Um, blade hardness, 57. Blade steel is Aus 8. It is a reverse Tonto. It is black wash and titanium nitrate um, with a four and three quarter inch grip. Perfect. Uh, G10 handle materials and Kydex sheet. So all in all, what do I have to say about this is, damn, um, it's actually a really, really nice uh, chef's knife. Great camp knife. This is one of those, put it in your camp bag and don't take it out until it's time to use it things. You don't need it for feather sticking. You don't need it for chopping down trees. You don't need it for any of that. You need it for being a chef knife. It has good flex to it. Seems like it's um, done really well. The grind is gorgeous. Um, I, I have to say that as far as chef knives are concerned, this is a good little knife right here. I wish I had a lobster on me. I'd do a lobster, but we do have something else. Um, I've got some sockeye. I've got some sockeye I gotta cook up. And if you've ever cooked through fish, um, you'll know scales can be a, a pretty tricky thing to cut through. So we're gonna put this thing to the test. I'm gonna have to wash it off though, because first I wanna see if it's gonna cut my, oh my goodness. So this thing, is abso super duper lootly shave sharp. I'm talking absolutely shave sharp. Um, last night I was out with my boys. I was out with Derek Pontier. He had a gig um, with uh, one of my really good friends, JC, Jason Cromwell, who is the uh, bassist for Mr. Big with Eric Martin and um, Chaz West. And I just texted him this morning. Chaz is a great guy. He, um, he sang with Bonham, Lynch Mob. He even sang with Foreigner for a little while. Um, but these guys put on a show last night. Oh, and Billy Six Strings. Um, uh, these guys put on a show last night. It was phenomenal. So my voice is all a little cracky because I was singing loud. Um, so good time. So I worked up an appetite last night. So I'm pretty happy I have this. We are going to go in right now. And I am going to cook up me a little sockeye. And I'm going to see exactly how this thing cuts there goes the sheath to this one because i just ba boom so uh these are pretty cool man these are pretty cool this thing i gotta say now that i rework the handle this is going to be one of my favorite um small carries and not small but you know what i mean small for me um it it's, feels so damn good in the hands uh i wish everybody would get yourselves a grinder buy one of these knives and do that to the handle it is flawless. So let's go, uh, let's go cut some fish. All right, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take some extra virgin olive oil and I'm going to put it on my cutting board. And you're gonna say, why are you pouring olive oil on your cutting board? 
And I'm gonna tell you guys straight up, I have no idea really. I think I'm just trying something new. So I'm just gonna put some olive oil all over my cutting board because I want it on the bottom of the scales. That way the scales are gonna have oil on it when I put them back into this. And you can see this beautiful, beautiful filet of sockeye is just going to be nice. So what I wanna do is just get a little oil on there. Maybe flip it over. I might even just put some oil directly on it. Should have probably been a little smarter, but you know. That way when it comes to the basket, because generally I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in the air fryer. Generally when you put it in the air fryer, you flip things, but with fish it'll break apart and you don't really wanna be flipping it over too much. So now I have my sockeye. What I need is two pieces, but I want to season and and do all that stuff so what i'm gonna do first is cut it and now that my hands are all greasy hold on a second oh that was easy went from greasy to wet all right so here's the test fish can be a son bitch to cut we are going to cut that son bitch all right shredder let's see how well you did me what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna hold my fish down and i'm gonna make a just a cut wow very very nice very very nice look at how clean this is don't worry, we're gonna cut more than a piece of fish all right so now what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna line my two pieces up and that way i can put on my seasoning without going all over the place all right so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just throw a little bit of a little bit of seasoning on there and i only have a little bit left so i'm only gonna put a little bit on there i'm gonna put as, as much as i got left in there and we're gonna see, I'm just gonna spread it out really, really nice. Really, really nice, I can see a bone. These things are pretty much boneless, but every now and then you catch one, you do, you take it off. Although the way you cook them up, the bones get so soft that you could just eat them anyway, so it doesn't matter. Well, that's it for that. So now, I'm gonna throw them in the basket, fully seasoned, oiled on one side, and then we're gonna get on to something else because we can't just cut fish. That would, that would not be, that would not be deep ish Ta-da! All right, so fish is there. We need one more thing. So last thing, got the tray underneath. So now we can pour a little bit of, uh, a little bit of lemon that I can barely open because my hands are oiled. And we're just gonna throw some lemon juice directly on top of the seasoned fish while it's in there. Oh yeah, you can hear that sizzle. That means that lemon's gonna start to steam up in there. It's gonna create a nice taste with inside the fish. All right, so we're gonna let that cook for a little while. And while we do that, because that's all it's doing, it's going in there and it's coming out of there when it's done. That'll be 15, 20 minutes, somewhere in there. But we're gonna go play. All right, so I decided we, we're just gonna go out and we're gonna chop some sticks and stuff. But before we do, before we do, let's see how it handles some fine slices. Oh, and I have some chicken bones. Oh, that's what we could do. All right, so we just want to do some really nice thin cuts. We're going to use some sliced turkey. And man, this thing is sweet. All we're doing is pulling the blade through. And the dogs are going to love this because I have nothing to do with this. So this will become a dog treat. Finely sliced and separated turkey. Ooh, the dogs are about to be happy. So what else can we cut real quick? We'll just throw a piece of cheese on there. We got a whole medley going on. And if you know you cut cheese, it just sticks to your knives and it can be a pain in the nuggets. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take a piece of it. We're gonna cut it up. Hopefully, hopefully, if I can get it out. Most people have problems getting it up right here. I have a problem getting it out. All right. Let's try and separate that. There we go. So now, cheese. We're just going to do the same technique. Line up my fingers. And this cheese is kind of dry, so what we're going to do is we're going to go more flat because this knife allows us to. And look at this. Look at this. It's just climbing up the blade on a dry cheese. Ooh, 
So nice. So nice. So this will get all your little uh, finger foods done. You see how that climbed up like that? The cheese stuck to itself rather than the blade. Came right off. Man, that is sweet. All right, so we have cheese and we have turkey. Let's get the big boy. So far, I'm thinking that this chef's knife is going to be a really, really good um, camp blade. And we're going to test it right now. We're going to go straight through the bone. What we're going to do is we're just going to put the pressure down. Man, that went through easily. Easily just halved that chicken. So now we're going to go the long way. We'll go straight through all the cartilage. Bam. Look at that. Look at that. Let's go one more time. We got that thigh bone. So what I want to do is on the thigh bone, give it a pop. Bam, straight through. You can see right through. Look at the cut in this bone. Look at that. That's a nice thick bone. Now let's check the edge. Check the edge for any uh, damages or anything like that. And that edge looks really, really nice. Really, really nice. Let's cut through some more bone though because that's the test. That's a test of a, of a true kitchen knife. Okay, here we go. Pop. And now we can just cut through the rest. That is sweet. That is really, really nice. One more time. One more time. We got the uh, we got a leg right here. So y'all know those bones. Bam. You heard that little snap right there at the end? That says I am all the way through. So, I mean through bones, through meats, through cheeses, through fish, you know, scales and all that. No, gosh, look at that. No problem. No freaking problem. No freaking defects. This is going to be good at the campsite. I'm telling you guys, you take down some game and you need to separate it. You need to get that meat ready for cooking. Holy mackerel. That right there is so far so mucho bueno. All right, young Shredder, you don't know this yet, but... Those dogs are about to be your best friends. Let me clean up. I'm going to go out and throw this to a little more testing. Ooh, we we're about to go outside to do some more testing, like feather sticking and processing to build your fire to cook your food. Hey, damn dog just walked right in here. He must be scared of something. He just walked in and laid down. <laughs> Fucking dumbass. Go, 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 go. Something spooked him. He came in and sat right next to me. All right, so while we were getting ready to go out, I looked over and I thought, hmm, that sockeye looks like it's done. I'm getting my fork stuck in the holes here. And it is done. So what I want to do is grab my mini spatula so I can get under this. It's really hard with the, the grate. Oh, yeah. Oh, I did get a little, a little skin stuck, but... Not too bad, not too bad. Let's see. It's coming off a lot easier than I hoped. I mean, than I thought, than I hoped. I like it to be easy. All right, so we got that. And this here. These metal grates, uh, these baskets can be a pain in the bucket. But this fish looks amazing. So it's worth it. And I know it's going to taste amazing. I made one yesterday. All right. So we'll finish that up later. Right now, I'm going to take a bite of this. Then we are going to go out and we are going to put the hammer of the gods to the test. And we are going to really see what this, what this thing is all about. That's a big, uh, that's a big steak knife right there. Oh, look at that beautiful pink sockeye. Mm -hmm. Oh man, man, I'm good at this. Mm. All right, so let me finish that. We'll go out. All right, all right, all right. So let's go to the stump and do some 
some soft stump tests. Obviously, we're not going to go crazy. Woo! This is your uh, this is your self defense kitchen knife. Um, we're not going to go crazy today, doing a bunch of different stuff because it is a kitchen knife. We got to respect it. Got to respect the blade. Got to respect the blade. I want to see how the balance in this kitchen knife is. Boing. And that's um that's pretty good. That's four feet. That's four feet through the air, dropping like a champ. I got some of this stuff in front of you guys. So let's see if we can't just take it out. Man, look at that, how sweet that is. Sweet, sweet, golly, sweet. Just over and over again, every cut is like whew, paper wafer. All right, so. Let's do this. Let's do this. There's a couple things I want to do just to see how really strong this edge is and how sharp it is. Even though we just used it cutting through fish scales and cheese and chicken bones, we're going to see if we can do a push cut on a half inch nylon. Wow. Wow. I didn't even get to finish saying it. Half inch nylon rope. No problem. So I'm going to tell you, this thing came sharp. It came sharp and ready to go. Some thick, thick cordage, right? Bam. Nothing on the edge. Remember, this is Aus 8, very, very thin, two, what, two and a half millimeters, somewhere in there. You know, I wasn't gonna do any kind of um, wood splitting or anything like that, but if it performs, it performs. So, you're at the campsite, and this is your camp knife, and that is how you only take a, a little tiny baby chunk. All right, so, let's see. There we go. There we go. We'll put Tom with it. I wasn't going to do this either. Because with a thin blade especially, batoning is how you get warps. But I kind of I kind of have a lot of faith in this blade. You know, I have a lot of faith in this blade. One thing I've learned about off-grid is even in some of the blades where the handles um, I think could use some redesign, uh, their steel has been fantastic. I have had zero issues with off-grid steel. Ugh, falling over there. Man. Not to, guys, this is the kitchen knife. That's a kitchen knife, right? So, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's go hit something harder. I know I said I wasn't going to, but every now and then you just got to wake up and go, I'm an idiot. So, let's let's try it. Let's try it. A little thicker. All right, a little thicker than those weeds here. Not bad, huh? Not bad, that's some crazy bite. Not too bad right there. That is some crazy bite. Oh, look at this. Look at this. That's paper. That all, I haven't even gotten into the stick yet. Am I even on camera? I haven't even gotten to the stick yet. I've been peeling just the top. Look at that. Look at that. That, look. I mean, let me see if we can get to the final. Finally, we'll get to some wood. Nope, not yet, because it's still making paper thin curls. Golly. All right, we're finally starting to get to some wood. And look, it's just doing the same thing. Curly, see the difference in color? White to brown. The brown is just the skin, right? Man, man, look how beautifully tight those are. Sharp those curls are. Let's do some pulls. We'll go with a side grip and we will just, holy Moses, look at these curls, man. Oh, trying to go in slow motion, but they're so paper thin. If I just move the wrong way, they're gonna fall off like that. Golly, those are so nice. So, um. I know that if you are in a camp situation um, and you need to process the wood to, you know, get it ready to fire and you need to get some um, kindling done and you need to get some feather sticking done, you need to get a fire started, this thing's going to get you there. And I guarantee you with this 90 spine, especially with the sweet little jimping here, I guarantee you could throw a spark right there. Guarantee it. Um, off grid. Good job. This thing is a, this thing is a sweet blade. This is a sweet blade. It's like kitchen knife plus some. 
You know what I mean? It's it's kitchen knife extra, I guess. I don't know, man. This thing is sweet. If you guys are looking for a kitchen knife just for the kitchen, just for in the house, I recommend it. If you're looking for a camp um, food prep knife, I recommend it. If you're looking for an all-around kitchen camp cook knife, I recommend it. Um, Shredder, awesome job, man. Awesome job, little brother, little bongo. So, um, so this thing, really, really cool. Really cool. And now that I eat fish, maybe all that, you can see my breath thing is actually coming to fruition. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you can see that. Fish breath, all right. So, this thing is cool. Shredder, you sent me something that I'm gonna use a lot because I cook every single day. So, um, this thing is gonna get a ton of practical use, of real life practical use. The off-grid Grizzly Blackout. This is a serious, serious, awesome kitchen knife. <laughs> Ooh. So, that's it for this one. Hi, I am Donnie B. All day. Until next knife.